Okay, today I want to do a review of a gun people have been asking me to review for quite a while now. It is my Remington RM380. This is a little 380 pistol. It's basically a clone of the old Roar Balls, of the 380 model of the old Roar Ball. So I got this quite a while back and people have been asking me how it's been doing. Well, I wanted to put a lot of rounds through it before I told anyone what I thought of it. And I think I've finally gotten to a point now where I can give you an honest judgment of this gun. So today I'm going to let you know what I think of it. Okay, first off, the gun does come with two magazines. They are both six round magazines. One is a flush fit magazine, one has a finger extension on it. The finger extension does make the gun much more controllable, but I think most people when they carry it would use the flush fit because the concealability is the main thing you want with this gun. As you can see here with the flush fit magazine, you're not gonna get your pinky on it. It's just a very small gun. This is gonna to have to be underneath the gun. With the finger extension on there, your pinky fits fine, makes the gun much easier to control. But since it's a 380 gun, it's not all that hard to control, but it is a little hard to get a grip on. But I probably would not carry it with this because, like I say, this just makes the grip too long. If I was carrying it on my waist, it'd be one thing, but I'm going to carry this in my rear pocket. This makes the gun too wide for my rear pocket. You know, I've already done one video where I talked about the features of this gun in depth, so I won't really go into detail about that today. But I will say it is a double action only 380 ACP gun. The sights are fixed and milled into the slide. There's nothing adjustable for the sights. This is basically just a point and shoot gun. Has a little bobbed hammer at the back here that actually activates when you pull the trigger, as you can see here. Now, a couple of things that do make this gun different than the old Roar Balls is that this does have a slide lock back here, and it does have a standard mag release. It doesn't have the one down here on the bottom. There's also some minor shaping differences in the back here, etc. But overall, this is basically a clone, a modern day clone of the Roar Balls. Okay, first and foremost, this gun is a conceal carry gun. This is a gun you carry when you can't conceal anything else. So it's not going to be the greatest gun for accuracy. It's not going to be the greatest gun for shootability. It's not going to be the greatest gun for much of anything except for being able to put it on your person without it being seen. So you have to keep that in mind when you review this gun. So I won't be as harsh on it on some things as I would be, say, a more full-size carry gun, but I will still point out some things that I do not like about this gun. Now, as far as concealability is concerned, it is very concealable. It's very thin. It's not very long. It's not very wide. Buy a nice leather wallet holster for this and you can slide it in your back pocket. It wouldn't be any bigger than most men's wallets. And to me, that's the easiest way to carry concealed when you can't carry anything else is just carrying a wallet holster. That makes this gun disappear. There is a bulge, but it's a bulge that most people expect to be there. Now, another thing other than concealability that I'll give this gun kudos on is it racks extremely easily for such a small gun. Small guns are usually notoriously hard to actuate the slide. This is so easy. It's like it's on rollers. I've never seen a small gun that you could actually work as easily as you can work this one. Now, the trigger is another story. It's kind of long. Uh, it breaks kind of weird. It almost feels like there's a hesitation at the break there. It's like I pull the trigger and then the hammer works. It's almost like there's a delay. There isn't really one, but it just is kind of clunky and slow, so it feels like there's a delay. Now, if you're firing quickly, you won't really notice that delay at all, but if you're staging your shots, you notice it a little bit, but that little bit of a delay does make it real easy to stage your shots. Get that hammer back and then just break. So the trigger is acceptable. It isn't anything that's great, but a trigger isn't going to be great on a small gun like this. It's made to be just pulled out and just pull the trigger. So don't expect wonderful things from the trigger on this gun and you won't be disappointed, but expect it to be decent and you will be happy. And for those of you that are actually interested, after being fairly well worn in, the trigger weight is just a little over seven pounds. Now, like I said, the sights are fixed, so there's nothing really to talk about about the sights. They're what they are. You pull this gun, point it, shoot it. You can use the sights if you have to, but they are very hard to acquire, uh, especially in a stressful situation. So as far as I'm concerned, this gun could not even have sights. It'd be just fine. Now, at the range, this gun handles pretty well. Like I say, it's nothing pleasant to shoot, but it handles pretty easily. It's fairly accurate at 15 yards. It's just not a bad gun for what it is. But like I say, it is a deep concealment gun. But I was able to get some good hits with it. I wasn't having any trouble firing it. It's something that I would trust to go off. It was reliable. I have put several hundred rounds through this so far, and I've only had one issue, and that was an ammo-related issue. So, so far, I say the gun is totally reliable. 
Now, there is one thing about the gun that some people don't like, and I know some even more people are not going to like that haven't experienced it yet, and that is how it disassembles. You actually have to pull the slide back till you see the little pin in there. You'll see a little pin in there, and then from the other side, you stick it a punch, and then you just punch out this little pin, and it does come all the way out. It comes completely out of the gun, and then you can take the slide off the gun. And once the mag has been dropped and that pin is out, the slide just comes right off. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to pull the trigger. Nothing. Now, one difference between this gun and some other 380s you might be familiar with is this is not a blowback. This is actually a lock breech gun, so it's got the standard pieces like any other gun, like a Glock, etc. It's got the firing pin and springs, uh, the tilt barrel, etc. The barrel does have a little flute on the end of it right here, so it has a very distinctive looking barrel. But it comes apart very easily and goes back together just as easily. So as I've said, the gun is reliable, it shoots fairly easily, the trigger is not too bad, and it's super easy to conceal. So this gun does everything it's supposed to do in the way it's supposed to do it, and it does it pretty well. And it's an all metal construction. You don't have to deal with a plastic gun like an LCP, etc. This actually has an aluminum frame, a stainless steel slide, so I like that better than I do most plastic guns. So overall, I would give this gun like a B plus when you consider overall what it's supposed to be. You can't compare it to guns that are carry guns, that are full size guns, compact guns, or even subcompact guns, because this is like a sub sub compact gun. So you can only compare it to other guns like it, like the LCP, etc. And in that category, this gun does very well. It's one of the better guns in that category. But now the question is, should you buy one? Well, I cannot recommend with any good conscience that anyone buy one of these. Even though this gun seems to be fairly good physically, it's still a Remington. And while I was reviewing this gun, I had a reason to call Remington about a tiny part for this gun. When I called them, I got some guy on the phone that sounded like he was either drunk or that I had just woke him from a nap who had absolutely no clue about the gun, had absolutely no clue about anything I was talking about, just didn't know the product at all. Then after being transferred around a bunch of times, he finally came back and said, oh, uh, I think I found that part, but uh, we don't have them in our system yet. We're not capable of getting it. Uh, we can't actually service these guns yet. Now, keep in mind, these guns have been on the market for quite a while now. So I said, really, you can't service a gun you've had for sale for quite a while. You can't even get a small part for it. You don't have those parts on hand to actually manufacture them. Oh, well, yeah, we got them for manufacturing. We just don't have any way of selling them to anyone yet. And I was like, well, you know, that's not acceptable. You know, let me talk to your manager. So he transfers me over to a manager who promptly hangs up on me after like two seconds of talking, didn't even find out what I wanted. And then I call him back. It goes straight to his voicemail. And that was two weeks ago, and he's never called me back. I left him another message since then saying, hey, call me back. I need to talk about this. I want to do a review of this gun, etc." Still nothing. So even though I think this is a pretty decent gun, I can't recommend it to anyone to go buy one because, like I said, no matter how good it is, it's still a Remington, a company that doesn't seem to care if they can actually service the things they put out. And if they don't care about servicing the things they put out, I can't believe they care about the quality or what the customers think of them. So until Remington gets their act together, I cannot say to buy anything that they put on the market.